Ladies and gentlemen, it is April 18th, 2016, and this is Daily Code episode 36, where we learn to code better. And uh, today we're looking at Vue.js. It is uh, about time, I think, uh, because I've used a lot of projects that include Vue, but I haven't learned Vue until now. And this is the goal for today. Let me move that a bit closer. So, um, I thought I'd be adventurous and try and do something, uh, kind of a combination of things, really. Vue seems to me to be very much like some other JavaScript stuff that I've used before. And I don't want to do the typical boring task list app or, or even previous examples I've used at making a CMS. Uh, I did that a little while ago on the daily, um, making a CMS out of React. And that's fun the first few times you do it. And now I'm kind of bored of it. So uh, what I thought I'd try and do is try and use Vue, completely not what it was meant for, to create a game or start in a game, start in a game at least. It's not the first time I've done or try to do a daily about game development. And turns out I'm not very good at it, but I want to learn. And I thought I would use Vue to try and do that. So uh, I'm just going to make an index file. I'm staring over the edge of a coffee cup. Probably not a good idea. Um, and I, this is this is obviously not what Vue was made for, right? Vue is um, appears to be a interface generation layer and uh, data binder, JavaScript library, and that's probably like the worst description anyone's ever given of it, but it's the kind of thing that you could compare to Ember or Angular or something like that. And so typically you'd see this used to make web apps, but I don't want to do something typical because I'm kind of bored of doing something typical. And instead I'm going to try and make something equivalent or at least attempt to start making something <laughs> equivalent to um, Stardew Valley, something like that. So uh, to begin with, I think just getting Vue running and uh, and getting to grips with, with what I know of Vue, which again, let me be very clear, is admittedly little. I've done about a third of Jeffrey Way's uh, training on this, which is fantastic, by the way. If you go to viewcasts.com, it redirects to laracasts.com. Jeffrey Way is a uh, teacher who focuses mainly on Laravel podcasts and does a lot of development in general stuff. So I've done up to lesson nine of 21. Um, so actually, I'm closer to halfway than a third of the way through. But I don't know everything about this. Yes, Matt Stauffer. Um, so, so someone in chat's mentioning. Um, sorry, I, ca I can't pronounce your name. DJ Echo, DJ Echo, um, said that they learned a lot from watching Matt Stauffer. He is also uh, a very prominent Laravel um, author and developer and speaker. And he was doing Vue a little while ago, and that's one of the reasons I got excited to learn Vue. Um, but so far, I've avoided it because, well. Pfft, it's just another. It's just another library, right? Um, but I want to change that. So I'm going to show you what the little things. Oh, hi, Alan. <laughs> I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the little things that I know about it, and then we can. Um, you know, I, I'll I'll extrapolate from there and try and do some things like random tree growth and uh, resource collection and uh, map generation. I'll try and do some stuff like that. And I can't promise it's going to be successful at all. It's probably not going to be, but I'll, I'll show you what I know and hopefully I'll learn a little bit more and maybe you'll learn a little bit more. So, um, to begin with <laughs> description, uh, to begin with view attaches itself to an element or you can attach view to an element like this. So you'd say something like new view and you'd construct, um, an element from this. So you'll say the element you're targeting is app using a CSS selector. And that's basically all you need to start a view app going. Um, if you want to use the uh, the Chrome development tools for this, you probably want to uh, you probably want to serve 
this as an application. <laughs> so I'm just getting the um, I'm just getting the serve command and seeing. Okay, I need to give this a custom port because I already have something running at one of these ports. So now um, I'll stop rambling in a minute and tell you what I'm thinking. Does this work? And do I have the development console? I don't. What is with that? I don't have this console here. Hmm. Okay. Let's take minified version off and refresh. Do I have it now? No. There we go. View dev tools. Okay. Now this is what I wanted to start off with. Okay. So view attaches itself to an element in the DOM and this is view as explained by Jeffrey, is essentially a view model architecture. So you have views composed of HTML and you have view models which tie data to a view. You have uh, data binding, unidirectional and bidirectional, so you can say message here. And you could give this content by saying, or creating a data object and saying the message is hello world. So when we refresh that, we see hello world here, and when we click on this, we can see the data that is bound to it, uh, which is pretty cool. That is right, I need to look, okay, so Vue.js, <laughs> Chrome Dev Tools. Sorry, the link's not gonna work. Um, yes, the link's not gonna work. You can just Google Chrome Dev Tools Vue.js and you will get to this page. You install this. Um, then on Vue.js, when you uh, you can install a development version version by downloading it, or you can go and get a CDN version. But the default link, as we saw here, um, is to uh, is to Vue.min.js, and the dev tools are disabled on that. So download the development version, or uh, or go to this URL and just remove .min from that if you want to get a CDN version of it. Link to that in your HTML page, like I've done up here, and make sure that the Chrome DevTools extension is installed. And then, if you serve this page through a local server, you can do Python server, you can do PHP server, which you would do uh, if memory serves PHP s localhost something or other um, from the directory. Then, when you serve that and you open uh, the DevTools, you will see this view DevTools. That's only really useful for debugging, which is why it's disabled in production. But I'm going to use it quite a bit because I think it's useful. From the three hours of Vue.js I've done, <laughs> look at me. Okay, so this is data binding um, in one direction. I'm not sure if we'll get to see uh, bidirectional data binding in the stuff I'm going to do tonight, but we can move on to some more interesting things. So if I call this, if I change this to map, for instance, I just want to change this binding here. Um, what I want to do is I want to start creating. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's not an extension, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, it is an extension. It's not some badass JS. Um, it would be awesome, but and it feels like there's quite a lot of hoops to jump through to get this to work. Um, but you know, I don't know of an easier way of with VJS. Perhaps someone in chat or someone who watches this after the fact. Yeah, uh, yeah, probably security holes from that kind of thing. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, what are we going to need? What are we going to need for this? If it's something like Stardew Valley, I'm thinking just the thing that I want to start with is just like the just the home map where you have a house and you have some rocks and trees and some uh, pools of water around the place. Um, so let me make like a, let me make a grid of, let me make a grid of tiles. Let's say, um, hmm, let's say data map. And this is, uh, maybe a two dimensional array of rows and columns. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what to do here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just going to do a 10 by 10 grid. And again, this is probably not a particularly accurate way of doing this. One, two, three, four, five. But it's the way that I'm going to think of doing it for now, um, because I haven't done anything like this before. Okay. 
Now, um, when you do something with Vue, um, let me think of how I'm going to say this. You can have what are called components, um, which are just basically uh, containers around a view model and a view, and you can repeat those components. So if I was doing this just with procedural, if just with like jQuery and some, some procedural HTML, I may do something like have a whole bunch of nested divs um, with an X and a Y coordinate and, and just draw stuff out with divs. On the other hand, um, I may want to give these a special name. So perhaps I start off by creating everywhere where I see zero here, just creating an empty tile, creating an object that contains the info for an empty tile. Let's try and do something like that. So um, maybe I could call that, hmm, what should I call that tile? What should this markup look like? Let's see. I'll just call this tile type empty. Nah, I want to call it, I want to give it an entity on its own. Should I do that? I don't want to have a, you see, the thing is I'm thinking ahead and I don't want to have, I want to be able to have water tiles and I want to be able to have flat ground tiles and grass tiles and tree tiles. And, um, and so I, I, I don't want to have one, let's call it a guard class. I don't want to have one guard component that has the logic for all of these things in it, because that'll just be like one JavaScript file that has thousands of lines of code and that'll be unmanageable. But, um, I also don't want to duplicate a whole lot of stuff everywhere. So I'm not sure what to do about this to begin with, but maybe I'll just have something called empty tile just to begin with. Um, and I'll have it as a self-closing tile. I do want to, um, I want to, hmm. you see, this isn't good. This isn't good. I think I have to have a central class for reasons I'll explain to you now. Okay. Um, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have an element that repeats called tile and it is going to take um, it is going to iterate over each row and each column and it's going to render one of these tile elements. So for now, I'll just make a simple tile like this, but I do want to have a template for this. So I'll say template ID is tile template. And this will just be a div with class tile for now. Okay. Oh, div, a span, I don't know. I don't particularly mind. However, now I need to create a component for this because a tile is going to be a represented, like a self-contained representation of something. So I'll say view component, which is a way to create a global component for this tile. And the constructor for this is, well, it has a template, which is at tile template. And it has some data. Um, but actually I will read those in as a property, I think. I think I'll read these in as a property. What do you think? Hmm. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. This is difficult knowing all this stuff. It's difficult. Okay. I've got a loop over each row and each column within the row. So to begin with, I'll say Z, uh, v4, which is a way to loop over elements within this. In fact, I won't even do that. I'll do tile v4. This isn't, this, by the way, this isn't very instructional because I, I'm not explaining this very well. But anyway, tile v4, um, column in row. And I also need to bind a row to this, but I don't know if I'm going to do that. Hmm. Column in map, row in map, row in map. I have to do, I, you see, I have to do nested tiles for this. This is interesting. Div class row. If I was doing this just with divs and not with the custom template stuff, class column row cell. I do this as like a table um, for each cell in row. 
Does that work? Hmm. Hmm. So, what does this actually render? Let me comment this stuff out. <laughs> this is very confusing. I'm sorry. But hopefully, if I get some, make some sense of this, it'll be better, um, more interesting. Okay, now we've got some custom markup here, and what this says to Vue.js is iterate for this expression, but we're referencing a variable here, map, and how do we actually get this in here? We've defined it down here as part of the data for this view model, but we actually need to bind it. So we'll say something like the, the long form of this is v bind map, and we give this uh, a variable to bind to, like map. Or you can just say bind like that. So I'll use the shorthand for now. Um, but in order to do this, we have to uh, also say that this view model accepts, do we have to say accepts a property? Nah, I don't think we do. I don't think we do. Let's run this and see what we actually get. Lots of cells. <laughs> Lots of cells, okay. Um, is there a way to get a key in this loop? Hmm, list rendering for, Oh, there we go, index item. Okay, so we can say x row. Well, we'll actually say y row x cell. Do we need to do this? This is actually an object. X value. <laughs> this is totally not going to work. This is totally not going to work. Wow. Okay. Let me try underscores here for uh, for the sake of not like messing with the expression stuff. But here we can say y index. I'm just going to debug this a little bit so I can see what's going on. Y value. X index. X value. Um, and I'll transform these or I'll, I'll um, format them as JSON. What does this give me? Okay, so this is the index of the, whoa, let's not do that. This is the index of the uh, row, which is why we've got zero going all this. This is the Y index and then this is the whole X value the x index and the x value. So these should all be zero in the last column and then these should be, these are counting like they should. Okay, fine. So we have a way to map this stuff out in a template view. And this is kind of, there's a bit of logic here, but I'm not really fussed because I'm, I'm not arguing the, the um, pure aspects of view. I'm just trying to get to grips with using it. But we have an okay start now, I think. I think we have an okay start. So um, this is uh, this is how we're going to render tiles. This is going to be the content of a tile. Um, we could abstract this to say that goes in there and uncomment that and format this a little bit. Um, the trouble is that we need to start. You see, we're accessing values here like y value. Um, we need to start binding attributes here, and this is this is an interesting thing to learn. Um, but before I get into that, I want to take a quick break. So I'm going to take a two minute break and then I'm going to be back and listen to some music. You won't even realize I'm gone. See you now.